How do you make a cool drink? And I'm not talking about stylishly cool, I'm talking about the sensation of cool. Well, obviously I'm gonna show you in this video because it works really well in drinks like mojitos or anything with mint uh, and non-alcoholic beverages that you wanna give a sensation to. So let me show you how it's done, it's easier than you think. I'm Darce O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. Now there is a clue right here, menthol crystals. And we've all had menthol, it's pretty common in peppermint and spearmint. And uh, the one thing with menthol is that it can be kind of harsh in the flavor profile, especially at higher levels. So you tend not to use it, though you can. Uh, if you use like peppermint or spearmint, you can work with those. But if you want a genuine cooling sensation without any flavor or bitterness or harshness, then you want to look at things like WS23 or WS3, Culotta. These are pretty common in the vape world. And so when you're vaping, I don't vape, but the idea of these is they give a cooling sensation in your mouth. Now you can work with these in food and beverages and they are uh, FEMA grass, so you don't have to worry about them. And you can get them from vape shops because if you're putting it into your lungs, it's high enough purity to put in your food and beverages because anything that goes into your lungs is far more sensitive than your digestive system. And we're only working with these in like the 10 parts per million or less, you know, ideally around one or two for some of the sensation. The higher you go, obviously, the more intense it gets. But again, the benefit of WS23 or Culotta, and there's a bunch of other ones that we'll talk about, is that they don't actually have a, a taste or a smell, just a sensation. So they don't have any burning sensation or bitterness. It's just a pure cooling sensation in your mouth. Now they do use a lot of these in mouthwashes and toothpaste to give them that cooling sensation. But again, I wanna reiterate the point that it does not give a toothpaste or mouthwash flavor. It is simply a gentle cooling flavor. Though some of them, you can use them in higher levels or some of them are more intense like WS12 and WS5, which are harder to get, but available. And they have a really intense cooling sensation. Now, some of these also have a, a length. So WS23 is fairly short as well as WS3, Culotta. And, you know, they last in your mouth or they give that sensation for up to like six minutes. So this works perfectly for something like a mojito where you're just, you know, you've already got mint in there. But on a hot day, you're trying to give somebody a little bit more cooling sensation, make the drink more, not intense, but more cool. And... That is like a super refreshing type of thing to have. And this is where these come in. Now, again, you can use menthol, you can use uh, peppermint and spearmint essential oils, but they are not going to give you the intensity of these compounds. Now these compounds, uh, WS23 and WS3, WS stands for Wilkinson Sword, by the way. So they just don't make razor blades. Uh, they do have a chemical element to their company. But these are synthetic compounds. Uh, they're not necessarily found in nature. But if you look for, if you want something all natural uh, that fits into this flavor profile without the harshness of menthol, because menthol is natural, uh, you'll want to look for menthol lactate. And that's found in Indian corn peppermint. So uh, it is a natural compound, but I'm fine with these. These are used a lot in vapes. So there's a lot of you know, data on it. And we're gonna be using them at one to two, maybe three parts per million for that gentle cooling effect. Though you can use them in a higher amount. So some of the peppermint schnapps like rumple mints or any of the other ones, I'm not sure whether they use this. But if they have a really strong cooling effect in your mouth, they probably do. And if not, there's a whole new market for you. Now, to make this is really simple, we're just going to use propylene glycol. These are soluble in propylene glycol and, you know, basically your compound. You will need droppers, so a dropper bottle is good. And I'm going to show you a way. The measurements in this are going to be that one single drop of this is going to be 0 0.5 parts per million. So in a drink, it will be, depending on the size of your drink, but let's say 240 ml drink or an eight ounce drink, this would be equivalent to two parts per million. So two drops would be the equivalent of four parts per million. So you can play around with this. 
Uh, this method is not necessarily accurate enough for developing your own products, but it will give you, if you're prototyping stuff, it will give you a good base for what you're looking for. If you really are into developing your own beverages, I do have a beverage development course that you can go check out, link below. Uh, and it'll give you far more detail on how to be really accurate with these. So when you scale it up to produce it, uh, you get consistency, which is what you need. Now with this method, the consistency is going to be good enough because you're going to be making it by the drink with a single drop or three drops of your solution. Now, when you make it, it does come out perfectly clear in propylene glycol. So, and it will be shelf stable for a very long time. Now you can buy this, as I mentioned, at some of the food supply companies, but you can also get it at vape shops. I do recommend getting the powders. You can get liquids, but they, are, they usually have a uh, diluent, you know, they're in propylene glycol already, and you may not know the actual amount in them. So I just like working with the powders. You can get all of these in powders, and then you just simply weigh them in. So what I'm gonna show you, we're gonna need one gram of our WS-23. Now when you're working with this stuff, it is light sensitive, so stored in a cardboard box or something or away from light. It's okay if it's exposed for a bit like right now, but do put it somewhere where it's protected from light. They are light sensitive. When you're working with it, you will get, you know, the, it's a fine powder. You'll get it in your nose and it, it gives a cooling sensation. So again, if you vape, you know this. I don't vape, so, uh, but I do work with these. So it does kind of, it's an interesting uh, sensation. So one gram in there, and then what we're gonna do, now I just eyeball this. You don't really need to be super accurate, but get a beaker and get 100 mils is what we're going for. Close enough. Again, this isn't accurate enough for developing, like a finalizing a beverage that you're gonna send to a co-packer. Uh, this is just good enough for working behind the bar or prototyping stuff. So just put it on a stir plate. This is going to take about five minutes to dissolve. And then once it's dissolved, you're going to end up with something like this. Uh, clear. I've been shaking it up so there's some bubbles in there. But uh, uh, that is basically your solution. Then whenever you make a drink, uh, you're just going to add a drop. So let me show you how to make a mojito with it. So let me show you how to make an enhanced mojito using our cooling agent and... Now it's a pretty simple recipe, but this will just give it a little bit more. So mojitos are quite simple. I just take usually half a lime. And then a little bit of simple syrup. You make it sweeter or less sweet, however you choose. And then I usually add about 50 mils of rum. Uh, mint leaves, so fresh mint leaves, and this is the point where we will add our cooling agent. Now we just need two drops of this. Surprisingly small, you can add three or four, but experiment with it to see which flavor you, or what level of cooling, as it doesn't really have a flavor, works best for you. Then we're going to muddle it, just to express the mint oils, and again, the combination works really well. You don't need to like pulverize the mint. You just need to uh, get it some of the oils out so that it tastes decent. At this point, I always add some soda. You can always top up later, but that helps mix the rum, the sugar, and all the other things. And then just add your ice. Then at this point, you can top this up. And if you're so inclined, you can add a sprig of mint as garnish. And if you, you know, if straws are your thing, you throw a straw in there, give it a little mix. And there you have a pretty simple drink, but a mojito and you do get the little bit of that cooling sensation. Now it's not when you first drink it, it's at this point where you start to have that flavor or cooling sensation kick in. Now this is a really low level. Uh, you don't wanna like terrorize people with, you know, it's so intense that it distracts from the drink. What you really wanna do is just have it at a level where 
It's contributing to the drink. At least that's how I see things, but you formulate things your way. Add something, uh, you mostly get it kind of in this, you know, a couple seconds after you have the drink, but you could easily go to three, but right now I find it actually pretty good because you really get this kind of cooling sensation as you breathe and talk. Give it a shot and see how you like it. Let's talk a little bit about some of these other ingredients because there is a whole series of WS coolants. So WS5 and WS12 are probably the most intense. WS12 has a very long lingering flavor. So like up to 30 minutes in some cases, depending on the dosage, uh, typically around 20 parts per million. That's too much, especially if you're going to be eating with your drinks. Uh, that cooling flavor is going to kind of mess things up a little bit. So WS23 and WS3 tend to have a short kind of five minute, six minute window where they're not actually like disturbing your senses for a long period of time. They also have uh, intensity. So menthol on the scale of one to or zero to five is a one. So it's not super intense. WS5 and WS12 are kind of in the four to five range, like super intense in small amounts. WS23 is kind of 0 0.75, so less than menthol. And Kulata or WS3 is one and a half. So more than menthol, about twice as much as WS23. So WS3 is good if you want to use, uh, get more of a, a kick and you want something that's easy to find. Now you can enhance these a little bit by adding a little peppermint oil to it. Again, you know, just a few drops of an essential oil in this. You don't want to oversaturate the solution, otherwise you might not dissolve. But you know, you could use up to, let's say a milliliter in this. And then when you add a drop or two to a drink like the mojito, you're going to get more of a pepperminty or spearmint, depending on which mint you prefer to use. You can do this in, you know, mint juleps. And especially for non-alcoholic drinks, you can give the drink a cooling sensation. So alcohol, ethanol specifically, has that kind of burning sensation uh, that people like. It's got that lingering, long kind of burn. Uh, people get used to it. But you can do this with a cooling sensation, again, opposite of burning, but uh, you can give that kind of sensation where people will enjoy it. Uh, for non-alcoholic drinks, I'd kind of recommend upping it a little bit kind of in that eight parts per million range. Uh, it will just give you kind of more intensity. Now let's talk a little bit about the math on this. Basically I said one gram in a hundred mils and that equals, you know, half a part per million. How did I get there? Well, if you put one gram, that's 1000 milligrams in a hundred mils of solvent, so that means each milliliter of solvent is going to have 10 milligrams of the cooling agent. Now, metric drops, so that is a measurement, and they're kind of a rough estimate. There are 20 drops in a milliliter. So if there is 10 milligrams of the cooling agent in a milliliter, and then you divide that by 20 drops, then what happens is you get half a milligram in a drop. So a half a milligram of cooling agent in a drop. Now, if you were to put that in a liter, so one drop in a liter, you're going to have half a part per million or 0 0.5 parts per million in a liter uh, because you're putting half a milligram in. Now, since we're making cocktails, there are, you know, this is an eight ounce or 240 mil or 250 mil. So roughly a quarter of a mil or a quarter of a liter. That means we need to multiply this by four to get the parts per million. So part per million is one milligram per liter. Since we're using 240 mils or 250 for easy, easy math, uh, we basically need to multiply that by four to get what would we'd accurately put into a liter. So if we had four mojitos, we'd add, you know, four to eight drops. That's where you get the math. But I've done the math for you. That's the way it works. You can do that with pretty much any compound. But again, if you're formulating beverages, 
Uh, a drop is fairly inaccurate. You're going to get a different drop size between this and between these glass ones. Uh, these glass ones probably are more accurate. These plastic ones are probably a little bit larger. But uh, if you're making this for behind the bar, you know, glass dropper bottles with a measuring drop, but they also have a, you know, a scale on it. So you can add a little bit more. If you're interested in all the math and how we get there, uh, again, the online course that I've made, Flavor and Beverage Development, uh, has the math for you. And, but for this purpose, one gram in 100 mils of solvent using one drop is going to give you 0 0.5 milligrams of cooling agent. So in one liter of mojito, that would be equivalent to two parts per million. So you can, if you want to use more or, you know, uh, you can double the amount. So you can put two grams of WS-23 into your solvent, into your 100 mils of solvent. And for each drop, that will give you one part per million in a liter or four parts per million in a 240 mil, 250 mil sample. So... Uh, the math is easy. You don't want to go too far above 30 parts per million. That's going to get pretty intense. Uh, FEMA regulations, they're not really regulations. FEMA guidance is max eight parts per million. But Simrise, the company that makes some of this, uh, recommends up to 30 parts per million. And uh, I know a lot of people think that the FEMA document is law. It is not. It's just guidance. Uh, and a lot of the manufacturers like Simrise, who's a big they're a big company. Uh, they, their guidance is up to 30, 35 parts per million on some of these. So I can, I'll put all this stuff over on my Patreon account. Again, if you made it this far into the video, hop over to Patreon, you'll get more out of it. Uh, basically, I made the cocktail so all the people who don't like watching long videos uh, can get what they need and move along. And then for anybody that's really interested in beverage development, talking about these little details that are important, because you can really make stellar drinks by using these ingredients, or you can compete with companies, you know, because you don't know that they're using these ingredients. And again, there's a fair number of these and other mint-like um, compounds. So this is Mintonent, and it's a Simrise product. It's kind of got, it doesn't have the cooling sensation, but it's got kind of a minty green aroma. So you can work that into these types of flavors, you know, one mil of this into that. Uh, using one drop is going to give you roughly one part per million or four parts or two parts per million in a drink. You know, there's also like isobutyl salicate, which has got, you know, kind of a semi-cooling flavor. Uh, it's kind of green. But you can work with stuff like peppermint oil and spearmint oil. There's different varieties. Uh, you can even work with menthol, but when you buy menthol, just get it in the big crystals because you know that's really pure. So anything crystallizes like this, you got high purity, which just makes it safe for food. And as mentioned, if you get the liquid stuff, make sure that the solvent using it to keep it liquid. But that's basically it. Uh, if you have questions, post them below or just set up a new uh, Discord server for more conversations. So it's Art of Drink over at Discord. Uh, if you're on Patreon, I've sent all the invites out. So, and if you want an invite uh, and you're not on Patreon, send me a or send a comment below. I'm gonna leave it pretty much open to anybody. Uh, I'll be answering mostly questions to Patreons, but if it's a good general question, I will answer it there so everybody gets to know because it's important that you formulate properly. So that's how you make a cool drink. So I'll see you in the next video.